Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to make roasted halibut with cherry tomatoes all in one pan, starting with these little guys. You're gonna half these cherry tomatoes. Here's the one pan for this dish. I'm gonna put all of these in here. Okay, I'm gonna drop like five. I'm gonna take two or three, I like more garlic than less, two or three cloves of garlic. I'm gonna mince them with this little mincer. Put it right in there. Okay, then you take one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, and this one's incredible. I don't think it's that easy to get, but if you can find it, it's so good. One tablespoon, but I love vinegar, so I might, oh no. Wow, that's really a slow pour. I might just do a little extra, because I like it. Take a teaspoon of honey, okay. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Can't hurt having a little more. Teaspoon of kosher salt. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. And one large shallot chopped. Even though I played Monica, a chef on Friends for so many years, I never learned how to chop. I could easily cut one of my fingers off any minute. Okay, so mix it all around. I might put one more shallot in there just because I have a lot of tomatoes and it looks like I can use a little more. But after you mix this around, put this in the oven 400 degrees for 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna take these halibut. It's halibut plural, I don't know how to say that. These halibuts, these halibut. Drizzle with olive oil and then I'm gonna salt and pepper them. Great, there's nothing in here. <laughs> then use salt and pepper the fish, and that's it. Okay, so then I put the fish, the halibut, inside, and I topped it with the tomatoes. Now I'm gonna cook this for 10 to 12 minutes. This is kind of a head, like a thick fish, so I'm gonna cook it for 12 minutes. Not that you need this, but I like to make aioli sauce to go with my fish, because I actually don't like fish at all. Um, so anything that I can pretend it's not fish, even though this is gonna taste so good, you won't know it's fish. This is really lowbrow, but I use half bite. Excuse me. <laughs> and half regular. And you put three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. The noise is extra. One clove of garlic, but if you use two, it's not gonna hurt. Take a lemon. A whole lemon, cut it in half, and then you're gonna take the juice of that lemon with the strainer and squeeze it into the mayonnaise e dip. And what I should have done is zest it first, but see, I didn't, that wasn't thinking clearly. So now I will zest this part, because you wanna zest the whole lemon. And then you see that nothing really happened, nothing came off, and it's all stuck to your little spatula, and then you go, why'd you do it? Nope, nothing came off. Okay, so maybe you try a different tool. You actually get a zester. You don't use um, a cheese grater. It's a dumb idea. So after I've zested this whole lemon, salt and pepper, taste, Himalayan pink salt is what I like to use, but you don't have to, pepper, Then you take cayenne pepper and do a pinch of this, depending on how spicy you want it, but I did a kind of a large pinch, because why not? Mix it around. Um, in the future, I would say get a bigger bowl, because this is too small and dumb. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get a different bowl. I'll transfer it to this bowl so I can actually mix it. Now back in this bowl of presentation, and that's gonna go on your fish, if you want to. This is so not a necessity, but just more if you like. I am from the South, we love mayonnaise, ranch, anything on everything. Okay, the last thing you need to do is uh, get a handful of mint and a handful of basil and just chop it and zest one more lemon. 
You don't have to do this, but it's nice to sprinkle it on top of the fish once it comes out of the oven, which is time now. And there you go. 